Greetings gastronauts, this is Keith Cooks, I'm Keith, and today we're going to do another Irish recipe for St Paddy's Day. I'm going to show you how I make Irish stew. The beast from the east has come back. Um, it's cold, it's wet, we're going to get snow tonight apparently. So a good thick warming stew is just the thing. The ingredients for the Irish stew, you need a load of lamb on the bone for preference. I've got 500 grams of lamb chops and a couple of hundred grams of diced stewing lamb. A couple of onions, a couple of sticks of celery and some bits of carrot, two carrots in installments. A good handful of parsley and some ground black pepper, probably some salt and a litre of beef stock made up from a couple of cubes. So you might see recipes that say use beef for your Irish stew um, but th that's just wrong and also they might say add Guinness, that's wrong as well. Uh, either of those, it's beef stew or beef and Guinness stew, it's not Irish stew. It's all about the lamb. In fact, in the olden days, it would have been all about the mutton, but you can't really get that these days. And I can't believe I've forgotten this. Essential ingredient, a couple of potatoes. So to get started, you want to peel and chop your onion. I'm getting a new knife today. It hasn't arrived yet, but I've had this one over five years, I should think, and I just can't keep an edge on it now, which is a shame because I do like it. Okay, first thing to do is chuck a good glug of oil in the pan, that's uh, rapeseed oil, and then pop your onions in, and we want them to get a little bit brown. Yeah, that'll do, so I'll just pop those in a big pan, pot. Apparently there is a technical difference between a pot and a pan, to do with the ratio of width against the height. Mm. So I'm putting the lamb chops in the pan, uh, fat side down, and that fat should render out and um, means that we don't have to add any more oil. Okay, they're browned all over, so we'll take them out of there and put them in the big pot. Now I'll pop these cubes of uh, fatty lamb in as well, um, get those browned. A lot of people say you should coat these things in flour. I, I don't subscribe to that. I mean, they say it locks in the flavour. It doesn't. It might thicken your gravy, but there's other ways to do that. And all it really does is clag up your pan. It tends to, you know, stick to the bottom and burn. All right, they're, they're looking lovely. So I'll chuck those in the big pot as well. And we'll add a bit of stock to deglaze it which is a posh French term for scrape off the burnt crunchy bits. Okay, we'll pop that in the pot as well. And get a minion to wash that pan, I wish. That beeping, the induction hub doesn't like it when there's not a pan on the surface. Now we'll pop the rest of the stock in. And we'll bring that to the boil. And when it's come to the boil, just um, turn it down to a simmer. And pop the lid on. Now we're going to cook this overall for, well, at least two hours, possibly a bit more. Um, but for the first hour I'm just cooking the meat and the onions on their own because the vegetables would more or less disintegrate after two and a half hours so uh, that's the only reason anyway let that do its stuff come back later right the meat's had its first hour so now I'm gonna peel the spuds and the carrots these are pretty grotty old carrots but you know they'll be all right they'll taste great now I'll just chop them into bits and I mentioned earlier I'm getting a new knife. Well, I've got it. This is it. And it's great. It's really sharp. So cut your carrots and spuds into bite-sized chunks. Oh, wow. Look at this. Cuts like a, a knife through spuds. That is really cool. 
<laughs> it's been a long time since I've had a sharp knife. <laughs> now we put the carrots and spuds into the pot. And we'll chop the celery into little chunks as well. Look at that. Gordon Ramsay, eat your heart out. <laughs> and remember, Keefe, keep your fingers tucked in. Otherwise, people complain and get worried. Throw the celery in as well. Stir it all together. I'm going to top it up with some water from the world's sexiest kettle. Now we need to just chop the parsley quite finely and save some of it for a kind of garnish later on. Pop the parsley in the stew as well. And just let that cook for about an hour and then we'll taste it and see what else we need to do. Okay, food porn shot. Time's up and let's see what we got. Woo! That looks good. Lots of fat floating on the top. If you're not a fat fan, well, you can stick it in the fridge and after a few hours, maybe overnight, it'll solidify and you can remove it and uh, sell it to me or, you know, somebody else who actually likes fat. Now I'm going to have a taste. Yep, that's pretty yuck. It needs salt. And a grind of pepper or two. More tasty. Mm. Perfectamente as they don't say in Ireland. That is really good. Here it is, time for a taste test. Aha! Knock, knock. Who's that? Irish. Irish who? I rescue you in the name of the law. Can't do an Irish accent to save my life. Oh, that's very good. <laughs> uh, get stuck in like. Irish stew. Irish stew, no it more. is. Yeah. <laughs> is perfectly legal Irish stew. Uh -huh. Oh yeah. I've just come in out of the cold. That is exactly what I needed. Told you. Thank you darling. You're welcome. Do you want a lipsticky kiss? No. <laughs> <laughs> okay mm. have some soda bread. Oh yeah. He doesn't like soda bread but I do and he makes wonderful Oh yeah, so there's a recipe for this on my Dublin Coddle, Irish Coddle video. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Seriously. It's dead easy. It's a light, crisp crust, not like you'd normally eat on bread. Mm. Oh, ha, ha. Mm -hmm. It's hot. Oh. Yeah. And then it's sort of moist and comforting and yummy and <laughs> mm, okay. Bye. All right. Later. Right. Okay. That's it. Um, if you liked it, give it a like and subscribe and make a donation and be a patron and all that. Um, so yeah. Thanks for watching and see you next time. Bye.